Ah! Do not like. to be serviced or no <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> 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 that's so one way to do it <laughs> I mean uh, <laughs> 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 ah, what the hell is that maybe we should wait and see. Service by that. <laughs> yeah, wait, well, let's find out what this place is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, doing a little end of the day shopping, huh? See something you like? I like everything. That's what I want to hear. I'm Lamont. This is my place. So if you got any questions, I'm the guy to ask. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I do have a question. Um, this friend of mine found the number of a receipt that came from this shop, and she asked me to ask you what the receipt is for. But if you're really busy, or you'd rather not, or it's against the rules... No problem. What's the number? <laughs> Pretty uh, girls. 21-3872. 21-3872. Here we go. That ticket was for a large box of assorted unknown privacy, items huh? I bought from Henry Bolay. And, uh... That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Is something wrong? Look, I just don't want to make trouble for anyone, okay? Can you tell me what was in the box? Can you tell me what was in the box? It's still in the back room. I haven't had a chance to really go through it yet. Hey, is there something else I can help you with? Beads, hula dolls, old books. Got great deals on all of them. Seeing as this place is called Zeke's, and it's your place. Shouldn't your name be Zeke? Guy I bought this place from wouldn't sell it to me unless I swore I wouldn't change the name. So I didn't. Funny thing was, his name wasn't Zeke either. But Is Henry Boulay a friend of yours? No, I met him at the reception at Bruno's house following the funeral. Where's gave Henry the my card, mm. said when he wanted to start liquidating, he should give me a call. Was Bruno a friend of yours? Way I hear it, Bruno Boulay didn't have any friends. Mm, but I wish he had been my friend. I mean, that house of his is filled with junk. He kept everything. For someone in my business, the place is knick-knack heaven. Guess I'll check this place out some more. You got a question? Just holler. Okie dokie. <laughs> Ooh, they weren't kidding. Ew, P U. Is it the crime? This might come in handy. Uh, hiccup powder. Oh, okay. Oh, we just gonna steal it? Okay, Bess. <laughs> wow. Five finger discount. Yeah. Oh, gee. I'm getting there, I think. What? Oh. So, let's, so that will lift so the bowling ball falls. Or we need to move the bowling ball out of the way? Ay, ay, ay. There, that should do it. Um, Lamont, could you help me? Oh, you're supposed to. Sure, what do you need? Um, I can't quite reach that bottle up there. Could you get it for me? Sure. And he didn't notice you messing with all of the stuff and rearranging things. Are we gonna watch the bowling ball? Wait. <laughs> You can step back and <laughs> Oh 
Oh no! Oh my gosh! Oh shoot! I'm sorry. I'll go get you something. What do you need? Why not just no like... No spray. Back room. No spray. Back room. Got it. Like just throw it at him. Yeah. You're like whoops. My bad. That was so elaborate. That was so extra. No and. <gasps> the iguana likes the the fruit. Oh, yes. Blue and blah blah blah. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh. it's the costume. <laughs> we look totally <laughs> missing. <laughs> We're looking at the doll. <laughs> look at the cute pepper. Say this on friends. Uh, Lorelai spent far too much time in the kitchen. Whoa, this is weird. I better call Nancy and read this to her word for word. Oh, okay. Wow, Bess, that is weird. No, I'll tell you what's weird. The box the letter is in is padded and it has this round indentation in it that's the exact size of a human skull. It's like it used to contain a skull, but now it doesn't. Did you find anything else? Yeah, Crystal inside skull. the box that this box is in, there's a couple of photographs. One's of a boy and a dog, and the other is of an iguana dressed up like a pirate. What? And there's what? a costume in the box of a skeleton man. Really? And did I mention that Lamont was very reluctant to talk about buying this box of stuff from Henry? Said he didn't want to get anyone in trouble, whatever that means. Sounds like he or Henry or possibly both are up to something they shouldn't be. Good job, Bess. I'm going to poke around here and see if I can find out anything about a skull called the Whisperer. You better go take care of Lamont. Would you believe it? The guy is still sneezing. He must keep nose spray around because something's wrong with his sinuses. Oh, he's going to hate me. All right, to the iguana. Probably. Hello. You want a fruit? Ah. <gasps> what was that? That was Uncle Bruno's pet iguana, Iggy. He's always in here stealing paper. He must be using it to build a nest or something. Look, I had all those books arranged so they fit perfectly in that box. Put them back in, okay? I don't have time. I just want to look through this one book. Go right ahead. After you put all those other books back. It's like, dude, I don't even want to be here. Why are you... Yeah. Yes? How did Bruno die, if you don't mind my asking? Just dropped dead in the front hallway. I mean, the guy was 95 years old. Here, check it out. Myocardial infarction. Heart attack. That's doctor speak for heart attack. Attending physician, Dr. Gilbert Buford, 504-555-9970. Was that Bruno's doctor? No, you know. And his best friend, or so I'm told. Mm -hmm. I've never met him. Interesting keychain. That's one of Uncle Bruno's glass eyes. It's the one he was wearing when he died. How keychain? nice. Anything else? He just had the chain sticking out. <laughs> he must have put it on the keychain. I'll stop bugging you now. Groovy. She actually Yes, hello. Hi, my name's Nancy Drew. Is this Professor Hodgkiss? I am she. Nancy Drew, your name has a ring oh, to yeah. it. Do She's I know you? The treasure tower. Yes, as yeah. a matter of fact, we met a little while back in Wisconsin. Oh, yes, you were the delightful young lady doling out the samples in the tasting room of that cheese factory. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> uh, no, I met you at Whitford Castle. That's ridiculous. There was no cheese tasting room at Wickford Castle. <laughs> no, no, we were both guests there. I found a journal written by Marie Antoinette, which you translated. Remember? 
thanks to you, suddenly all I can think about is how wonderful a nice big slab of Colby cheese would taste right That's now. So nice. Listen, Mandy, I'm on a deadline, <laughs> so if you could please just tell me why you called. But my name is... Deadline! Let's cut to the chase, shall we? Chop, chop. <laughs> Did a man from New Orleans named Bruno Bollet ever call you? Ah, now there's a name you can remember. Bollet. Nice and French. I'm a scholar of French history, you know. Yes, I know. So did Bruno Bollet call you? Indeed he did. Oui, oui. <laughs> Why did he call, if you don't mind my asking? Because he had read my book, of course. The Crystal Skulls. Fact or fable. One of my best efforts. Sold like hotcakes. Be a fable. Mothered in that a doesn't rich seem right. Penny lemon sauce. Did he say anything about owning one of the skulls himself? I would have hung up on him straight away if he had. I tell you, Brandy, if I had a dollar for every crackpot who's called claiming to own one of those skulls, I'd be able to dine at the Russian tea room every evening for the rest of my life. All right, that's a bit of hyperbole, but you get the picture. No. If memory serves, we talked mostly about the skull called the Whisperer. He wanted to know if I had learned any more about it since my book was published, which I hadn't, or if I had any theory as to what happened to it, which I didn't. And that was the extent of your conversation? Well, now, let me think. My, my, such insatiable curiosity, Nellie. You remind me of someone I encountered on one of my journeys. But for the life of me, I cannot remember her name or the circumstances. Nancy Drew, Wickford Castle? Ah! The eyes have it. I'm sorry? That's what Bruno Bollet said when I turned the tables and asked him if he had any idea where the Whisperer was. He said, the eyes have it. Then he chuckled and hung up. Hmm. How much would a crystal skull like the Whisperer be worth? In this crazy day and age? Where the shorn hair and used tissues of celebrities get sold for thousands of dollars? There's absolutely no telling, Candy. A half million dollars easily. Maybe even a million. Maybe two. Maybe ten. The sky's the limit. Cha-ching, cha-ching. If someone found a skull made of crystal, how could they be sure it's one of the crystal skulls? Wonderful question, Francie. How indeed. Because there are sure to be thousands of fakes out there. Perhaps tens of thousands. But remember... The real skulls were made long before the tools commonly used for carving today were invented. Which means, let's put on our thinking caps. Modern day tools would have left marks. Modern day tools would have left marks if the skull was a fake? Exactly so. Mind you, the marks on a good fake would be microscopic and thus imperceptible to the human eye. However, any thorough laboratory analysis would quickly unmask a counterfeit. So the only way to prove that a skull is the real deal is by proving it's not a fake? And by examining its provenance, its history of ownership. If it can be shown that a particular specimen has been passed along from antiquity into modern times and didn't just suddenly appear in, say, Germany in the mid-19th century, that would tend to support its authenticity as well. The idea that the Whisperer can make its owner immortal, do you believe that? I believe that things that defy any so-called rational explanations happen all the time, Nessie. Now, does that mean there are mysterious external forces at work in the universe of which we do not and cannot ever have full knowledge? Or does it all boil down to us? If the human heart desperately wants something to be true, does the human mind have the power to make it true? Who knows? Oh! Questions, questions, questions. Oh, how dreary life would be without them. In your book, you said that all the people who've ever owned the Whisperer were murdered, yet Bruno Bollet dropped dead of a heart attack. Are you saying the Whisperer was in his possession after all? The scallywag! Why didn't he tell me that? Oh, that's right. I would have hung up on him. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then I strongly suggest you take a close look at his so-called heart attack, Sandy. Because if he owned the skull and he died, I guarantee you it was at the hands of someone else. Or my name's not Beatrice Gertrude Winifred Hotchkiss. Mm -hmm. I'd better go. Thank you. Rock and roll. <laughs>
Mm. She's got a little bit of what Renee has. Yeah. <laughs> Hello again. Did Dr. Bollet ever say anything to you about a crystal skull? He may have referred to it as the Whisperer. No, he never so much as mentioned a crystal skull, mm -hmm. whispering or otherwise. Were you in the house when Dr. Bollet passed away? I was indeed. I was in the library cleaning when all of a sudden I heard a big thump. I hurried out to investigate and sure enough, there was Dr. Bollet lying by the front door. And as I rushed over to him, the door opened and in walked Gilbert Buford. He took one look at Dr. Bollet and hollered at me to call 911. So I ran back into the library and did just that. When I came back out, Gilbert was leaning over Dr. Bollet, listening for breathing, I suppose. And then he started pushing up and down on his chest. But it was too late. Even I could tell that Dr. Bollet was gone. What was he doing by the front door? I assume he saw Gilbert coming and was going to open the door for him. Not that there was any need. As you yourself discovered, people around here seldom lock their front doors during the day. But you know, in the back of my mind, I have always wondered about Gilbert Buford showing up at the door at that exact moment. I understand that Dr. Bollet had some interesting pets, like an iguana. That man never met a creature he didn't like. He trained them to do all kinds of silly tricks, then let them run free inside the house as well as out. Do you know how he went about training them? I surely do not. Don't get me wrong. I liked Dr. Bollet, I truly did. But I swear, sometimes his activities made as much sense to me as bathing in a bayou full of gators. I'd better get going. Thanks for coming by. Mm -hmm. You wanna go get the etchings? Oh, yes. Um, shove our hand in the spider hole one more time. Yes. This is definitely like peak Nancy Drew. Mm -hmm. it's, this is good. The bird! The bird. Uh, bones are their money. money. <laughs> so are the worms. So, what order did you do? No. So worms, <laughs> worms, bird, bones. The key is in. The model. The model looks like yeah. Oh, worm. My face. This is Dr. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? No, ma'am, I cannot. <laughs> Is this an emergency? Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... See, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. Need some consoling, huh? <laughs> yes, I need some consoling. That's it exactly. Well, tell you what. It's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in the French Quarter. If you really need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. Great. Do you know the address? It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. Did you say Rampart and Domain? I did indeed. Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. My loss? That mutual friend of yours and Dr. Buford's. Oh, right. Keep it together. Thank you. That's very kind of you. She was like, Bye. I have to get this guy. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's me. So what's been happening? Tell me everything. Well, let's see. Since the last time we talked, I was just about getting ready to... 
interesting stuff. But the reason I called is, I need you to talk to this doctor well, named Gilbert Buford, who, as it turns out, likes to hang out at a gumbo stand called Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cookin', which should be right well, across from our hotel. Mess. You just want me to talk to him? That's it? Nothing nefarious? No black ops stuff? He was Bruno Bollet's well, doctor, best. <laughs> and apparently his best friend, too. I just need for you to see if he thinks there was anything weird about the way Bruno died. What do you mean by weird? I mean, I kind of think maybe Bruno was murdered. Murdered? By whom? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Everyone's a suspect at this point. Including this Gilbert Buford guy? Well... Great, I'm gonna be chatting up Jack the Ripper. Oh, I'm sure the guy's fine, but be subtle, just in case. Well, I can see the gumbo stand from our balcony. If he's the guy that's sitting down there, I guess he looks harmless. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Thanks, Bess. Let me know what happens. Cheerio! Jump, Bess. Why, hello, young lady. How kind of you to grace an old man with your lovely presence. <laughs> Are you Dr. Gilbert Buford? I'm delighted to report that I am indeed. Your answering service said I'd probably find you here. This here is my favorite spot in the whole city. Delicious gumbo, pleasing view, particularly now, I might add. <laughs> my name's Bess Marvin. I'd like to ask you some name. questions about Bruno Bollet, if that's okay. I'd prefer a subject matter of a happier nature, but I do not want to seem inhospitable, so... What is it you want to know? Is it true that Dr. Bollet was your best friend? Well, now, I was certainly his best friend, but I cannot honestly say that he was mine. Fact is, while socializing with my fellow man, particularly with pretty young women such as yourself, has always been a source of pleasure for me, Bruno was just the opposite. Unfortunately, the older he got, the more numerous his idiosyncrasies became, and the less concern about their negative effect upon others he became. His idiosyncrasies didn't bother you? Now, as a doctor of medicine, I am not only accustomed to dealing with the abnormal, but I find that <laughs> so I'm miserable. actually drawn to it. I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed Bruno's outlandish personality. Although, at the same time, I fear it may have played a role in his demise. You see, he died of a myocardial infarction, most likely caused by age-related atherosclerosis. Mm -hmm. Dying of a heart attack is all too common for people who are socially isolated, and Bruno Bollet had most certainly become that. Dr. Bollet's housekeeper says you just happened to walk in just as he was having his heart attack. Is that true? Indeed it is. I hadn't seen him for a while, so I picked that day to pay him a visit. I walked up to the front door, found it unlocked as usual, opened it, and there he was, lying on the floor in obvious distress. The next thing I know, his housekeeper came running in and started shrieking and carrying on until finally I sent her out of the room so she could summon an ambulance and I could once again hear myself think. Then I... Well, let's see. Then I knelt down and saw that he wasn't breathing. So I pulled him away from the doorway so I'd have more room to work on him and began chest compressions. I continued until the medics arrived, but nothing they did made a difference either. Was Dr. Bollet unconscious the whole time? Uh, yes, he was. Can you remember anything that might indicate what he was doing by the front door? I mean, had he just come in from a walk? Was he wearing a hat? Was he holding anything? Had he dropped something? An umbrella? Sunglasses? Wait a minute. Why, yes. Yes, he was holding something. A piece of paper. And on the floor next to him was an envelope. He must have collapsed while reading a letter. Do you know what happened to it? Now, I know the letter was no longer in Bruno's hand when the paramedics arrived, so perhaps he released the letter when I moved him. And yet, I do not recall seeing it on the floor when they wheeled him out the door. Iggy. What's Iggy? Iggy. Iggy is an iguana Bruno befriended, then turned loose in his home. It soon developed the annoying habit of stealing paper and stockpiling it mm. in the vent system.
Did you see Iggy while you were tending to Bruno that day? No, but then I rarely ever saw Iggy. Moreover, it would not have been the first time a missing document ended up in Iggy's possession. Rene would periodically call me saying the lizard had absconded with one of Bruno's prescriptions and would I please write her up a replacement? In any case, oh, yeah. Bruno yeah. once told me he was training Iggy. <laughs> said he taught Iggy to retrieve the things it had stolen. For medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. Did they do an autopsy on Dr. Bolle? No. Given Bruno's advanced age and the absence of any indication of foul play, an autopsy was deemed unnecessary, and the body was cremated according to Bruno's wishes. Did Dr. Bolle ever say anything to you about owning a crystal skull? Why, yes. Yes, he did. In fact, he showed it to me once. Said it had magical powers. Said owning it was going to allow him to live forever. I thought it was utter nonsense and told him so. Well, he didn't appreciate that at all. Refused to talk to me for a full two weeks. Do you have any idea where he kept it? No. He was terrified that someone would steal it from him. So he told no one its location. Not even me. Tell me, Miss Bess. What do you know about that crystal skull? This friend of mine, who is also a friend of Henry Bollet, you know, Dr. Bollet's <laughs> great nephew. Anyway, while she was visiting Henry, she saw this book in Bruno's library about the legendary crystal skulls and was kind of intrigued and thought that since Henry said that you were pretty much Bruno's only friend, maybe Bruno had said something to you about it. And as it turns out, he had. That's all I know. I see. <laughs> Well, much as I'd like to believe that skull holds the key to immortality, I'm afraid Bruno's passing proves it's worthless. Although it would make an attractive paperweight, as I recall. Tell your friend not to give it another thought. Do you think it's possible that Rene caused Dr. Bollet's death by, say, hoarding the pills from those missing prescriptions and giving them to him all at once? No. Had he died of an overdose of the medications I had prescribed, the manner of his death would have been quite different but he died of a heart attack. Of that, I am certain. However, I know for a fact that Rene is deeply involved in the practice of hoodoo. And as Bruno's housekeeper, she had ample opportunity to use it against my poor old friend. You mean hoodoo really works? Young lady, never, ever underestimate the power of suggestion. If a person believes in something, even on a subconscious level, fantasy can easily become fact. And who knows what rubbish Rene filled Bruno's mind with. Drink this, don't eat that, this brings good luck, that brings bad, day in and day out. Even if he said he didn't believe a word of it, who knows how much his subconscious was absorbing. He was very old and vulnerable. So could Rene have caused Bruno to have that fatal heart attack? There's not a doubt in my mind she could indeed. I've bugged you enough. I've enjoyed our conversation immensely. Mm. Nancy! <laughs> Hello? Hi, Nance. Okay, here's what's been happening at my end. And that's pretty much it. Good work. I'll take it from here. Thanks again. Good luck. Bye. All right. To the mausoleum. Spider hole. Spider hole. Be the painting that goes in that empty frame. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. so a sad boy crying. Mm -hmm. Good buddy. Good dog. So we were weeping in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Good. Buddy. Yes. <laughs> I'll let you get back to work. Awesome. I'm just gonna pretend. 
That's it. Happen. Yep. Okay. Put your back. This one. He could be toothbrush. Be uh, banana. Oh yeah. F for fan. M for monkey. monkey. <laughs> oh. L for lollipop. lollipop. Dog. Oh. Spooky. Dun dun dun. Come on, Summer. Give me a break here. You never said anything about that. Well, how was I supposed to know? I mean, what am I, telepathic? No, no. Come on. Don't get upset. Look, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. What do you mean, something else? You gotta be kidding me, Summer. I don't have that kind of money. No, no, I meant I don't have it now, but I will soon, okay? Bye. Oh, man. <laughs> Zoom in, heads. Oh. I am the beholder. Okay. <laughs> You go down? Mm -hmm. oh. <gasps> Spider key! Spider key! Spider key! Does whatever a spider key does. Spider key! You put a glove on and grab the key. Yeah. Wait, is this the wall behind what's her face? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta figure out what the word is. Right. Here, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Get the fruit. Yeah, yeah. Iggy, come here, Iggy. Got something for ya. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, where's the pipe? Are you just, you just dressed him up however you want? Just to do different things when... Oh, when you put on certain yeah. outfits, so... Is it missing the pirate? Is that what that is? Uh, uh. <laughs> cool. May 31st? That's today! Uh. 
junk up here. an eyeball. Mm -hmm. Come on, Nancy. Mm. Mm. Ah. Oh, hi. This must be where I'm supposed to put all the glass eyes I've found. Let's see how we're doing. So many eyeballs. You can do it. Two hours later. Right up the middle. Real gentle. The eyes have it. <laughs> eyes can keep it. Holy crap. Wow. Okay. That was a lot. All right. So then I think we still need to try to get this one. Gotcha. Oh, my God. Just needed to grab it. Yeah. <laughs> There must be another way out. Oh, oh we got stuck. Yeah, ah, yes. Here we go. Okay. Phonetically or whatever what the word is. Oh. Hmm. Yep. Oh. Okay, so phonetically, what is? You got here some guarding by the tree. I don't the boss. One loquat's all I need right now. What? No. No quat. More Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get it, Iggy. Because that's probably what's going to be the letter. Mm -hmm. And then the optometrist will probably bring us an eyeball. We just got a letter. Be gone, Ignatius. Oh. Is it fake? Aha! Hmm. Oh my god, that we're spraying all these things with pesticides and it's fine. Fine. Get into the iguana. Iggy, I know you're full of fun though, Quads. I'm gonna have to get No ball, please. <laughs> Come and get it, Iggy! I'm gonna be Dr. Iggy. An optometrist. Oh. Get it. Thank you. Shall we go? Avenge my clan. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to do the the pirate dummy. The what? The pirate dummy. Oh, the pirate dummy. <laughs> All right. Bye. Ah. 
Eyeball, please. Thank you. Here we go. go. How many eyeballs do we have now? I mean, imagine it from this guy's perspective. He's just sitting there, like, stressed out, trying to deal with, like, matters of his, you know, uncle's estate. And this gal is just running around, <laughs> playing with the grandfather <laughs> clock. <laughs> like, bouncing inside and outside and inside and outside. Like, upstairs. tracking mud in. <laughs>